Okay, now we're going to do some more integration by parts, and we're going to take some more tricky integrals. First one we're going to do is the integral of sine of natural log of x dx. Now at first glance this might look impossible, but it's actually pretty simple, and we're going to use the fact that we can cycle through the derivatives of the trig functions just like we did with the exponential times the sine. And you do integration by parts twice, add the integral to both sides, and solve algebraically. So let's see what we mean. We'll start off, we'll take u is equal to sine of the natural log of x. Now to find du, you just use the chain rule, and you're going to find that du is equal to cosine of natural log of x divided by x dx. And if we take u to be sine log x, that means that dv is equal to dx. v would be the integral of dx, which is just x. So let's write down the formula. Integral of u dv is equal to uv minus integral of v du. And so the integral of sine of natural log of x dx is equal to, here's u and here's v. So we have x sine of natural log of x minus the integral of v du. So we have x cosine natural log of x divided by x dx and the x's cancel so I'm just going to rewrite that so now we've got integral of cosine natural log of x dx now we can do the same procedure on this integral so let's write that up here. Once again, we take u to be cosine natural log of x. Using the chain rule, you would find that du is equal to minus sine log x over x dx. And again, dv is dx, and so v is just x. Alright, so let's use the formula again to for integration by parts to write that out. So we have x sine natural log x minus our new uv, v is x, u is cosine log x, so we have x cosine of log x now we're going to have minus the integral of v du, but we have a minus sign for du, so that becomes a plus. And we have x times sine log x over x, so that cancels. And so we get plus sine log x dx, and I'm going to go ahead and add the constant of integration. Now if you carry through the minus sign here, we can get rid of those parentheses. And this becomes a minus sign. So now we've got minus sine log x dx. So what we found is that the integral of sine log x dx is equal to x sine log x minus x cosine log x minus sin integral sine log x dx. So we can add this term to both sides. And when you do that, you're going to have 2 integral sine of log x dx is equal to x sine log x minus x cosine log x plus the constant of integration. 
So to get your answer, you just divide both sides by 2. Let's make a little bit of room on the outside here. And you find that the integral of sine of log x is x over 2 times sine log x minus cosine x plus the constant of integration. So there's a nice illustration of how integration by parts can be used to do something that looks really complicated. And it's not all that hard once you know how to approach it. Of course, that's the trick. All right, now let's do integral of log squared of x dx. So this time I'm going to take u to be log squared of x, then du, again using the chain rule, will be 2 log x divided by x dx, db is dx, so v is integral dx, is just x. Alright, so when you put these in, we have integral of log squared of x dx is equal to uv, so we have x log squared of x minus the integral of v du, and you notice when you have v is equal to x times this term, the x's are going to cancel, and we're going to pull the 2 on the outside, so we have 2 times the integral of log x dx. Now we already know that the integral of log x dx is equal to x log x minus x plus your constant of integration. And so this is just equal to x natural log squared of x minus 2 times x log x minus x. And we'll add the constant of integration. And so we can just write that out like this, x log squared of x minus 2x log x plus 2x plus c. Alright, now let's move on to the next example. Next example we'll do will be integral of x squared minus x e to the x dx. We're just going through some examples here.